Waking up on Revival is here again. God will never have cause to consult your past to bless you in your future. He never has cause to consult your history to bless you in your destiny. That's why I want you to sit relaxed knowing fully well that your best days are still in the front of you. Somebody shot a big A in Hello friend, this is Revival is here again. I'm sure you're getting ready to come into oof, something really, really exciting and great. These messages were trapped from live services in our church family, Revival House of Glory International Church. And I'm sure that God is about to really push you to levels untold as we capture uh, the great grace, the anointing where with this message were preached. Get ready. Revival is here again. This is Goodheart Obiakum, the host of Rehab. Welcome to Revival is Here Again with Good Heart. God is about to speak directly to you as this message is guaranteed to impact your life. As you listen today, expect that God's word has been sent in your direction to bring about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me to receive God's word through his choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Equime. Shall we lift our hands and bless him for two, three minutes? Let's thank him for the amazing open heavens we enjoyed. It is for man to dig a well, but for Almighty to cause water to flow out of the well. The psalmist declared this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. Shall we lift our voice and thank him? The keeper of this house, the one who has watched over us night and day, the Bible declares he's the one who daily loads us with his benefits. Oh, many slept like dead men last night, but the mercy of the Lord, not the alarm clock, not your phone, not your iPad, but the Lord woke you up this morning. I'm sure you know he is deserving of your praise. You don't have to have a limousine, a Cadillac, a Benz to praise him, a seven bedroom mansion just to be alive. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. You're not in the mortuary of no, you are in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and bless him this morning. Oh no, 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 no. We know the best is yet to come. We've seen grace in 25 days, but we know the best is yet to come. Can somebody thank him? To he that is joined to all living, there is hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. If all we did today is say thank you, we've done well enough. Yes, 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 yes. Like the one leper, we are back to say thank you. Come on, Roger. It's your moment. You don't need a choir, you don't need a band, you don't need a preacher to thank him. If you can think, you can thank. He overlooked my frailties, overlooked my flaws, overlooked my shortcomings. I didn't pray accurately perhaps, but he showed up. His mercy alighted my way. Roger, let's show our God we are a grateful family. Yes, we are. We are. We are. Look around you and see how good God has been to you. Look at your children. Look at your spouse. Oh, you don't have one? He's on the way. She's on the way. If only you can give God an advanced praise, he will show up. She will show up. It's not over until it's over. He will do exactly what he said he would do. Shandamanamados. Shandamanamados. Sing like never, never before. Oh, oh my soul, I worship. Love on Jesus for two, three minutes. Bless the Lord. Oh! 
to the Father. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Philippians 4. Let's read together verses 4, 5, and 6, or perhaps I will read, or if the multimedia can present the amplified version, we can read together. Amplified version. Philippians 4, verses 4, 5, and 6. Shall we read together as a happy family? Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, take pleasure in him. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. Let's go. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving continue to make your specific request known to God. The King James Expression says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God verse 7 says and the peace of God the shalom of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and the minds through Christ Jesus for the assignment this morning rejoice God has heard and answered you can you speak to seven people prophesy rejoice God has heard and he has answered you it's time to rejoice it's time to throw a celebration it's time to go into a party it's time to shout for the victory it's time to announce to all that everything has changed. It's time to declare that you are in your new season. It's time to declare you've come into a new day. Somebody rejoice. Hallelujah. Our Father, it is with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving we gather again. Under this open heavens, in this sanctuary, deliberately and purposefully to give you alone the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due your name. We judge you faithful. You have done all things well and left nothing undone. As a people of faith, we honor you, we celebrate you for the things we've seen you do, but also we give you an advanced praise for the things we know you're about to manifest over our lives. Now I beseech you again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven and on the lips and the tongues of clay of this seven son of yours that today will come to your people with a word from the throne of grace. Help me to go beyond my study, my contemplation, and my memory to speak expressly, thus saith the Lord. We'll have us always to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' wondrous name we have prayed. Let somebody shout a big, big, big amen. You may please be seated in God's wonderful presence. Our God is certainly up to something good, something great, something wonderful, something exciting, and something adventurous. We are made to understand that walking with God guarantees us to enjoy continuous increase and advancement. 
There is nobody who genuinely and sincerely walks with God that will stay in one place or experience stagnancy or stagnation. God guarantees forward movement and God guarantees upward movement. The Bible declares in Proverbs 4, 18, describing the path of a just man, of a righteous man, it is such that shines brighter and brighter even to the day of perfection. Beloved, God has much more in front of you than behind you. There is nothing that you've left behind that God needs to bless you in your future. There is nothing you forgot or left in your past in your history, in your history, or in your past, or in your yesterday, that God needs to bless you in your future. As you've heard me say, I say again, God will never have cause to consult your past to bless you in your future. He never has cause to consult your history to bless you in your destiny. That's why I want you to sit relaxed knowing fully well that your best days are still in front of you. Somebody shout a big amen. As a church family, we have been in a most refreshing, invigorating, exciting time of waiting upon the Lord for 21 days, what we call 21 days of glory. And in my mind, those days were indeed days of glory, days of birthing the future that God has spoken to us prophetically, and days of coming in alignment, in agreement with heaven concerning God's plan and God's blueprint for our lives. Like we heard the gentleman and the lady said, the very, very best place to be in life is not is not in America, not Canada, not Nigeria, not Jamaica, not Tokyo, not Ghana, not South Africa, but to be smack bang in the middle of the will of God for your life. That means no matter no matter where you are, as long as you are in the will of God for your life, you have a guarantee that all that you need and require will be supplied you. Somebody shout a big amen. We look at a young man called Joseph. He was a man of great dreams and aspiration. He, he saw on a certain day that he was going to be a king. He dreamt once. He shared with his father and mother. They envied him. He dreamt again. They got more envious of his dream. But he held on fast to his dream. But you see, the dream you have today is not a guarantee that you will see the realization of it tomorrow. Sometimes, most times, God will allow you to go through a process of refinement to bring you to the place of manifestation. That was exactly what happened to Joseph. But you see, the beauty about the processes of life is that no matter what God allows you to go through, he will create a pavilion of provision for you so that people around you wonder, how is it you survived this challenging moment? How is it you survived this delay? Sarah, how could you wait for 25 years? Abraham, how did you survive waiting for 25 years? Uh, Joseph, how could you wait for 13 or 14 years, however long it took you to become a king from 17 to being 30? How could he survive? But the point is, God releases enough enablement or grace for your journey that every point where you are, he will satisfy you. Joseph, though he was found in the pit, he was favored of the Lord to be sold to the right people. Joseph, though he was found to be a slave boy, was favored of the Lord to be bought by the right people. Joseph, though he was sold or, 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 or put in the prison, he was favored of the Lord to be put in the right prison at the right time. Beloved, all I say to you is that no matter what God allows you to go through, there is enough grace to go through it because God will never allow you to be tested more than you are able. Somebody shout, I can handle this one. Oh, say like you mean it, I can handle this one. That's a word of encouragement for somebody, but that's a prophecy for somebody that no matter where you find yourself in life today, you can handle where you're going through because God ultimately is going to turn your test to a mighty testament. Glory to God. It's my sincere belief that God has greatly moved us progressed us in the path of fulfillment of destiny in the past 21 days. He has helped us settle and secure the future he has for us in this year and beyond. Beloved, there is no one who embarks on a journey to seek the face of the Lord that will experience a futile effort. The Bible declares in Isaiah 45 verse 19 that God has not allowed the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. 
It says, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness and declare things that are right. God will not allow the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. One of the things we know that we have received in the place of waiting and watching, we need to remind ourselves, is strength, strength, strength. Isaiah 40, 29, 30 says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. That means those who have the physical composition to be strong, when they're brought under certain pressure and temperature and test, even they will fall under those pressures. Even the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait, and this day is not, it's not, it's not, it's not defined or limited to age or size or stature. There is anybody, whether young or old, whether tall or short, whether dark or white, this is, this is an open check for anybody, if anybody or they that do meet the condition of waiting upon the Lord, guess what? They shall renew their strength. That word renew speaks of an exchange. The eagle is such that it gets to a point in the peak of his life, it, it goes through what is called a renewal, a birth renewal, go through a very, very interesting process, but ultimately what will happen to the eagle is that his beak will fall off, his feathers will fall off, then new feathers will grow, a new beak will grow, and then the, the eagle will take what is called uh, uh, the, the, the eagle flight of renewal. And from that point in time, the life of the eagle is renewed again. So when the Bible refers that we, we that wait upon the Lord, renew our strength like the eagles, it means there is a divine exchange. In the past 21 days, heaven allowed your weakness to be exchanged for his strength. Heaven allowed your fears to be exchanged for his faith. Heaven allowed whatever was a cause for tears to be exchanged for his own joy. That means you are coming out or you've come out on this day renewed. Not the same you that entered the 21st day. Somebody shout a big, big amen. It says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. <laughs> you see, the beauty is that the first thing that happens from this moment of waiting is that they shall run. They will not walk. They shall run. Be not weary. Then they will walk. Beloved, I have good news for somebody under the sound of my voice. You are going to move out from this mountain, not crawling, not walking, but I see you run. I see you run. You're not going to run by your own strength. You're not going to run because you have your own oil. No, heaven has exchanged your oil. Guess what? In the day that the hand of the Lord came upon one Elijah, in 1 Kings 18, the Bible says, Elijah gained an amazing speed and momentum. He ran furiously. He caught up with the chariot of Ahab and overtook the chariot of Ahab to the gate of Jezreel. I perceive and I believe this beautiful day that the merciful, the gracious, the mighty hand of Almighty God is coming upon somebody today, upon you your business, upon your career, upon your health, upon your marriage, guess what? You are about to run. The beauty is that you've been on Mount Zion and the Bible guarantees that those who are on Zion, they go from strength to hallelujah. They go from one level of strength to the next level of strength. Psalm 84 verse 7 says and Amplified, they go from strength to strength. Guess what? Increasing in victorious power. Each of them appears before God in Zion. And each time you appear before God in Zion, there's a guarantee that those who came feeble are going to walk out strong. I prophesy that anybody under the sound of my voice who may be laboring under any kind of disease and infirmity as the Lord declares on Mount Zion receive strength, receive healing, receive vigor, receive vitality right now in the name of Jesus Christ. They go from strength to strength. All they appear before God is that. Beloved, prayer does not only change things. Prayer changes people. Whilst things have shifted around us, more of the things that have shifted, our lives have become transformed. Our lives have been changed for the better. Rumble.
The Global Prophetic Prayer Altar is a worldwide and interdenominational prayer network. All, all the glory belongs to you, Jesus. Jesus asked his disciples to tarry for one hour with him, and he has made that call again today. This is a call to people everywhere to congregate in a world without barriers and to invest global prayer power to make all things conform to God's will. Join Apostle Goodheart Ekwene online every weekday at www.radio.logic.org or on Facebook and Instagram at Apostle Goodheart or download the Horn of Revival Ministry app free at Google Play and Apple stores. GPPA is an altar for the global gathering of God chasers and Jesus lovers. Hello, my good friend. This is Goodhart Ombioko, the host and the presenter of Revival is Here Again TV broadcast. The same that is syndicated across many networks across cities and the nation of the world, including this particular network. We have been broadcasting this for many, many months and years now, being a blessing to a huge number of people across cities and nations. As the name infers, it is riveting, carrying the fire of revival in all that we present out there. Lives have been changed and testimonies have been drawn to this particular broadcast. We believe it's time for this work to go to the next level. And there is something called Kingdom Partnership. And we have what is called the Kingdom Air Force Partners, a team of people across nations who have said, Man of God, we join our hearts and our hands with you. We'll place seeds in your hand and we'll pray with you to see that this work will go further beyond what you alone can do. The law of San Diego says, one, which is a thousand to fly, but two together, which is not two thousand, but ten thousand to fly. We can together do much more for the king and the kingdom than I can do alone. Why don't you join hands and force with me? Look at the screen below. you find how you can become a Kingdom Air Force partner, how you can begin to give on a constant basis. It'll be my joy, our joy, to send to you a monthly gift and also send you our newsletter as a periodic newsletter be a blessing to you. In the meantime, I want to see you on this side. Join in hands and hearts with me as we take this work to a whole new level. Remember, Revival is here again with Good heart of your coming. Blessings. Love you. Good heart. It shall come to pass on this day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. May that be your portion today, I decree in the name of Jesus, that any form of burden, is it the burden of, is it financial burden, is it the weight of not knowing what to, how to go about the difficulty of the pandemic, is it a yoke of infirmity, anything that represents a yoke or a burden, is it a concern over your children, anything whatsoever that represents a yoke or a burden that you have come that's on you right now i decree in the name of jesus that by reason of the anointing it is destroyed of you it is removed from you and you will never see it again Alright people, that's how far we can go on today's broadcast of Revival is here again. Half a truth, Revival is really here again. Whoa, what energy, what passion, what light, what zest, what vigor, what vitality. I'm sure you're pumped up, but beyond being pumped up, I'm sure the word of life has come to transform you, change you, and shift you, and take you to lift onto. Well, this is Revival is here again with Good Hero Biakwema, and I challenge you and encourage you to be a part of this broadcast each time the airwaves are open. I want to pray for as many people under the sound of my voice who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, heaven is a reality. Hell is a reality. Don't let anybody deceive you. Somebody once said, if you miss heaven, you will not miss hell. You will not miss heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Every man has a choice and your choices and your decisions lead to your destination. Now, Jesus Christ has come to the earth, pay the price for entire mankind, the entire human race, but we at some point have to make the choice to receive him. Now, this hour, you can invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. Can you bow your heads together with wherever you are upon the face of the earth? 
Let's pray sincerely to our Father in heaven. Bow your heads. Let's pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you just as I am. I lift my heart and my hands unto you as my sign of surrender. Forgive me all of my sins. From today, I turn over my entire life to you as my Lord and my God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare I'm blood washed and blood bought in Jesus' wondrous name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, hearty congratulations. I want to hear from you. Send us email, call us, want to send materials to you and stand together with you in faith. And wherever you are located upon the face of the earth, I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church where you'll be established and you'll thrive and flourish like nowhere else, where the Word of God will shift you and move you to where you belong in Christ. Meanwhile, let's get together in the next rehab broadcast. Remember, revival is here again. This is Good Heart. We'll be a comment wishing you a wonderful day and a glorious week. Love you much. Good Heart. Signing out. We believe that you have been tremendously blessed by the ministry of Good Heart Obi Akweme. It is our conviction that this message has begun a mighty work in your life, and we pray that the grace for prompt obedience to the Word of God will rest upon you. We look forward to hear and celebrate your testimonies with great expectations.